people. The yearlings um, have been ridden for about three or four weeks now and part of the breaking process that we're trying that's new this year is that we have an international dressage rider and coach, Malcolm Holthausen, who's coming in to just give us a bit of a hand with the horses and with the riders, sort of coming at it from a different angle from traditional race riding to more sort of dressage riding. Hopefully it's going to help the horses and help the riders. It's just a sort of different style of riding and obviously Malcolm brings a sort of wealth of experience. We're trying to teach the horses at this stage to be soft in their mouths, stretch through their backs, learn to have leg on their sides rather than riders having their stirrups pulled up. So it's a different sort of riding that will hopefully benefit the young horses enormously and make them a lot easier to ride in the future. You can see behind me what we're trying to achieve. Sarah in front's on a new approach colt. He's only been ridden for four weeks see how, how relaxed he is. Sarah's got her leg on his side with a little bit of contact in his mouth and he's stretching through his back, using himself properly. He's well balanced and the hope is that if a young horse can learn these basic skills of carrying a rider with balance early on, it helps their riders in the future, it helps them to balance themselves in a race and it should help with injury prevention because they'll be able to pick up their feet properly. If they learn basic manners at this stage, it should help them in their later career. Young horses can even learn whilst they're walking. So here we can see Malcolm's getting them into formation and in that three they'll just sort of walk through each other. So it's the first time they've ever really been taught to go in between horses and walk through horses. And again, it's valuable education for when they get on the race course. We're about six weeks into the breaking process now at Hamilton Hill, so we're in the latter stages. The horses are on the walker for half an hour, tacked up in the mornings. They then come into our rings here. We've got a three furlong ring around me that you can see, which is private, so we can do whatever we want in here, which is great. They trot about six furlongs twice, and then they'll have a little hat canter of three furlongs, and they'll also walk through the wooden stalls. Perhaps most importantly at this stage, we've got them in normal tack, so they've got normal bits on a loose ring snaffle rather than the breaking bit that they had on for the first five weeks, and they don't have their side reins on anymore. We're trying to make sure that the yearling's been exposed to everything they're going to experience at the beginning of their training programme in the trainers here, so it's not too much of a shock for them when they go into their trainers. The first six furlong trot that the horses do is just to get their backs down, but then the second six furlong trot they do, you'll see behind me, the horses are all zigzagging. Um, and the reason we do this is just to make sure that they're listening to their rider and not just following each other around the string. It teaches them to bend properly, um, teaches them to sort of listen to pressures on the mouth. Just trying to make sure that they're actually getting an education and not just being sat on. Starting to get the horses to learn about going through each other, getting them confident in going through gaps, all the time thinking about things they're going to be faced with on the race course and trying to sort of replicate it in the best way here. This is something that Malcolm taught us to do this year and is proving a great hit with everyone. It seems to work well. And then they'll have a little hat canter. Again, important to get them in smaller groups for their canter because I don't want them all just following each other around. This way we've got four different horses leading the canter rather than just one. We're just starting to get the yearlings used to going through stalls with a rider on their back and we just start off by using the wooden stalls behind me. So again, just baby steps all the time, just trying to make it a gradual process and, and not overwhelming them and not frightening them at any stage. Good girl. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Good girl. Not that scary. The group behind me here have been here for 10 weeks now and this is their last day so we're at the final stage. They've all been out on the heath cantering for about three weeks now and we couldn't be happier with them. And this is sign off stage. So Marie Murphy, who's Charlie Appleby's assistant trainer, has come out to see them today so that we can give her the full load down on each individual horse and try and make sure that the transition into training is as smooth as possible for them. All putting on weight now. The only one that wasn't was Nishama but she put on weight last week. They can cut across now, Andy. If you just tell them to get on the canter before they get to us, so they canter past us. They did their first canter on the grass this morning in little groups of four, just sort of teaching them to get used to cantering next to other horses and having other horses around them. And their second canter is on the way home, so we just want to see them nice and relaxed, single file, hat cantering home, and hopefully just enjoying themselves, really. The most significant 
part of this counter is the fact that they haven't got the white rails either side of them. So they're really learning to go in a straight line, listen to their jockey. They've all done an amazing job through the breaking process here. The lads have done a remarkable job with all of the horses and now they're ready for the next stage with their trainers. So here we are at Hamilton Hill on Botanique's last day here. He's off to Charlie Appleby's this afternoon and as you can see behind me here, um, Kev is just getting him ready, um, putting the final polish on him and making sure that he looks nice for his arrival at Charlie Appleby's yard. You put this sticker on their backsides and that notifies you of their sire and the dam. Ooh, big fella. We check that with the head collar just to make sure they will check all this again once they arrive at their destination. Each horse has a part, its own passport, just as a, you and I have to go abroad and that. These go everywhere that the horse goes, whether it's racing or to the yard or to the vets. And this will be stamped and checked with his pin number. And has every detail of each horse, all their markings, all their uh, records, their, their medical records, everything, they're all for you. Thank you very <laughs> okay. much. He arrived here from Kildangan on the 2nd of November, so he's been here for just over two months. He's been an absolute star pupil, we haven't had any issues with him at all. He's been very straightforward at every stage. As you might be able to see, he's sort of shot up behind, he's growing, um, and he's going to be a lovely, lovely horse. And he is now off to uh, Moulton Paddocks to hopefully have a successful career with Charlie Appleby. That's him on his merry way. The Cape Cross Botany Cult has arrived to us at Moulton Paddocks this evening from pre-training. From tomorrow onwards he will start his training here. We'll introduce him for a few days in the jogging rings and then gradually introduce him to all the gallops that we have out there. Perhaps most importantly, two or three hours out in the paddock every day. The turnout is a really important part of the breaking process in my mind. I think it's really important that a young horse can have a few hours every day out in the paddock, heads down, eating grass. It's very good for their minds just to have that couple of hours every day where they can do their own thing. 